wind is blowing and all of the houses are falling down. A young woman by the name of Joanne has just bought one of the houses and as it crashes to the ground in a million irreparable pieces, she begins to cry. The house was to be her new start after many a wrong turn. She had invested all the money she had and could borrow into that house and now was left with nothing for Joanne. She has now fallen to her knees and in despair smashes the ground with an angry fist and breaks one of her long fingernails. The fingernail cries out and throbs, and the wind blows on. Such is life. Nearby, the man who looked like a tomato, Mr. Tomato Man, saw Joanne and ventured towards her. Can I help you? He said, squelching. Everything is lost, cried Joanne. Oh, your poor house, said Mr. Tomato Man, looking down at the mess that the house now was. You can come and stay at my little hovel until you find somewhere else. That's very kind of you, said Joanne, brightly, slightly. Think nothing of it, said Mr. Tomato Man. It's slowly living alone, and I wouldn't mind someone to look at and speak to. Come on, he went on, turning away towards his own little house. Let's be getting gone. It's a bit windy out here. And so, together, they breezed away into Mr. Tomato Man's little house. And indeed, as a pond in seed, it was a little house. So small, in fact, that, due to a lack of space, to get into the kitchen, you had to walk rather dodgily across a wall. Anyway, Joanne was very happy and told Mr. Tomato Man so by singing him this badly, badly, badly written song. My fingernail's broken but I don't care Cause I've got you to iron my hair In places dark, in places green And all the places that you've never seen a broken boat with a broken oar Will I ever sail to the happy shore? Elderberries fall from the apple tree So this is life where nothing's free But hope hangs high like a sultan in the rain If I can meet such as you again and again Oh, a broken boat with a broken oar Will I ever sail to the happy shore? Creaking floorboards in your hall A picture of Shakespeare on your wall And your batter bleaks and there is no loo What a grotty house, but it does suit you Oh, a broken boat I mean, I help you out by letting you stay in my house and you upset me. 
Get out, you scoundrel! Oh, you found her of a woman! No, no! cried Joanne. I was trying to be nice! Ha! snapped Mr. Tomato Man, grabbing Joanne by her broken fingernail, which hurt like hell, and threw her out and slammed the door hard, and then locked it 29 times just to make sure that she could not get back inside again. He then went to bed and, quite suddenly and sadly, died. Joanne, meanwhile, outside in the depths of night, with snow falling everywhere, began to freeze. Hope is beyond me, she cried, as icicles beat up her tears and took their places dripping down her tender cheeks. Up above, the moon wallowed high in the sky in his midnight shirt and tie, but never said a word, just like God really.
man, a strange creature without substance or time, the dustbin man of the souls of the universe, look down at the unfortunate Joanne and sigh sadly. Yet again I am here to help and point the way from possible suicide to joy and happiness, he said. Your inner body's howling of destitution alerted me and brought me here, and I will now do my best for you, but I must have your full cooperation or the task at hand is impossible. Do you understand? Yes, said Joanne. I will do my best. Good, said the sack man. He then vanished inside Joanne's body and put his mythical magic to work. New feelings of optimism arose in Joanne. The sack man was happy and satisfied that he had saved another wandering soul and then disappeared back to his castle home of the planet Venus and there ate a huge portion of poached eggs in sewerage and vomit. Such is appetite. Back on planet Earth, Joanne looked at the sun and saw a diamond. She looked at the mud and saw gold. Feelings of joy, hope and happiness thrill her body and a warmth glowed all about her. What? She then wandered off down a road looking for some wood to start building a new house with but wandered into several seagulls who were fighting with a grubby looking little boy. Help! The seagulls cried out at Joanne. This fiendish boy is trying to steal our last egg. It is the last seagull egg in the whole world and if it does not hatch, our species will expire. Gone forever. Will you help? Yes. Shouted Joanne, rushing towards the boy who now held the last seagull egg in the world, firmly grasping his hand. It is my face, he croaked at the onrushing Joanne. So go away, you harmful human. Leave me in peace. I'll leave you in pieces if you don't put that egg back, you evil child, growled Joanne reaching out with an angry hand and squeezing the boy's neck a bit tightly. The boy went blue in the face and dropped the egg onto a bouncing mushroom. The egg went ziggering off with a great big boing into the high clouds and the seagulls went flapping off after it and, quite surprisingly, so too did Joanne, as at that moment she sprouted some wings. No, not tails, wings. Those flapping things. Off she went, following the seagulls as they followed the egg off into the sunset of a brand new day. The egg went spiraling off towards a rainbow and there landed on the very top of it and sat there humming brightly. The seagulls got hold of it eventually and took it back to the nest and Joanne followed them all the way and sat on the egg to keep it warm while all the seagulls went off for fish and chips at the local restaurant. Me, 
Meanwhile, whilst Joanne wrapped a handy bandage around her broken fingernail as she sat on the egg, an evil fire witch, who had designs on the last seagull egg in the world, closed in to try and get her evil teeth into the egg. Joanne saw her coming and kneaded her hands into ample fists to defend the egg. But her Muhammad Ali jab was of no consequence when the fire witch laughed, ha ha, and then cast a horrible spell on her. The spell, an evil and smelly thing, zoomed into Joanne and instantly turned her into a golf ball. However, luckily for the seagull's last egg in the world, the golf ball looked exactly like it and the silly ha-ha fire witch picked it up by mistake and ate it, then floated off into the distance to cause chaos somewhere else but with now a strange belly ache. The seagulls, having paid their extensive bill at the restaurant with piles of gooey droppings, returned to their egg and settled on it gladly. For soon they knew it would hatch and, after an hour or so, it did and out popped a brand new seagull who, like a machine, started to squawk for fish and food immediately. Meanwhile, Joanne, now languishing in the fire witch's stomach, went for a wander about. Her great stomping feet caused the fire witch huge indigestion and she farted and belched like an absolute crude man. Lost in a hole where nobody goes, nobody sees, and nobody knows. It's my life, the way it's been, always vanished when I've needed to be seen. And the flags will twirl in the morning air, now I need the sack man, they say he's everywhere. Will he come and help me again, so that one day I may touch the rain? Or will I remain in this hole, as black as night, as cold as coal? And the flags will swirl in the morning air, now I need the sack man, they say he's everywhere. man came to Joanne again, and he sat down beside her in the fire witch's stomach, but he did not say a word, he just pointed the way, and when Joanne took his lead on tired feet, he disappeared away, away, away.
Suddenly merged into the world again Via the fire witch's left nostril And as the fire witch slept happily On a bed of putrefying human corpses Joanne dashed away into the night Free Such is life No, no, that's not the way it happened, no, you must listen on, on, on. The trick with this modern life is to get well ahead and chase out the frauds who feather your bed. So who needs a walker when he hasn't got a leg? And those times you wasted your regret when you're dead. And time is thy lovest. Welcome to the cheap seats. The trick with success is it always runs away. Just when you've got it, it wants to hide and play. But time is short, so fair play is dead. No need to feel sorry for the loser on whom you fed. And time is thy lovest. Bell towers and sermons seem far away When you're lost in life on some summer's day But darkness will follow and catch you in time So open that bottle and drink all the wine And time is thy levest broken, everything went wrong, those dreams you had, more a dirge than a song, but no need for nightmares, there is always a way, to cheat on the bastard who hides behind God and pisses on your day, and time is thy lovest, so join the And the dogs attack the fool. But what has happened to Joanne and her broken fingernail? Ah, well, as you know, if you've been bloody well listening, you'll know that she's languishing in the nasty fire witch's belly after having been turned into a golf ball and then eaten by mistake. Now then, down in the fire witch's belly, the golf ball spell had now worn off and Joanne was now back to her normal form. Although, now only measuring some one inch in height. She looked down at her broken fingernail and sighed. But what are we to do now, she said. I have an idea, said 
a broken fingernail, throbbing with gush and excitement. We shall travel through the tunnels in this evil body and find an exit and thereby escape. Sounds easy, said Joanne. Hopefully it will be, said the broken fingernail, suddenly moving and pointing the way ahead into a dark and foreboding tunnel. Follow me, Joanne, it said, leading the way. The tunnel ahead heaved with mucus and stank to high heaven. Joanne had to hold her nose or surely the smell would have taken her to the graveyard. After a time though, with much relief, they passed through and out of the terrible tunnel and emerged with much joy back into the world, neatly placed in one of the fire witch's nostrils. Luckily for them, the fire witch did not suspect anything as she was now peacefully asleep in a bed of somebody's disused shit. Come on, scampered the broken fingernail. No time to waste. Let's get as far away from the mad woman as possible. I'm with you all the way, said Joanne, following her broken fingernail as it led the way daintily down the fire witch's ugly face and then down into the sea of poo that lay festering all around. Such bless! The stuff gets everywhere. Well it would and it does when you're only one inch tall. Oh. about in the middle of this sea of shit. Oh no, it's, it's a bog tog, the midget woman's mortal enemy. Battle time, a fist in a face, a foot in a bum, suffering and pain, dum, diddle dum, diddle diddle, diddle dum, dum. was closer to you than you ever knew I was that funny face waiting in the dew I'd have said hello but I was afraid to say I have a place for you so come and stay As the evil bog tog came slithering towards Joanne, and she felt the end of her world in sight, 
a young man who works in the local New Age prison that was built on a huge cloud up in the sky, appears out of nowhere and starts getting romantic with her and squashes the evil bog talk with his mighty foot. Joanne felt saved and glowed and quivered with abashed womanness and slowly began to grow back up to her normal size again. These things are new that we see today. Like a floating breeze our days will play And grow and glitter on the darkest night When all that we be will shine like light The young man by name of Kerry Septitude Welsh I'll call him Pain Elemental for short, due to his immense size. Anyway, he embraced Joanne and kissed her, and then smiled like a tricky cat. But then, quite suddenly, everything changed, and Pain Elemental found himself alone in a huge and screaming forest. But there, in the distance, on a little island, in the middle of a river, stood Joanne and her broken fingernail glowing and calling to him. I am your holy grail, she cried, as angels swam about her hair and face and crooned a melodic song. Pain Elemental looked down at himself and suddenly found himself dressed in a proud knight's armor. He drew the huge sword from its scabbard tied to his waist and held it high in his hand. I am coming, he shouted to Joanne, then stepped off through the cracking and crunching carpet of the forest, but was suddenly besieged by dark and evil knights and had to fight with all of his might to win and survive, and as he did so, I'll sing you another song. But not this one. This one's nearly finished now. I think. Racing through the forest with a hard-edged sword, chopping down the knights as they appear in their hordes. Will salvation come calling, or is all hope lost? For the love of a woman, must he pay the ultimate cost? But his sword laughs mighty, and the battle is at last won. Now he stands before the river, as the island glitters in the sun. But now around him, strange things gather and linger in the breeze, of which he sings aloud as he falls to his knees. There is no 
Joanne's broken fingernail as, after Payne Elemental had wandered across the river to the little island on which Joanne stood, not only did Joanne's broken fingernail get better in seconds, but also they both drowned in romantic bliss and then disappeared off into the heart of the sun to live forever in eternal happiness with never a bad moment again. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. 